Hello and very warm welcome to YouTube channel of Dr. Zia Ahmed. Uh, once again, I need to repeat here that I'm recording this video on the novel um, Twilight in Delhi by Ahmed Ali. Uh, but I must say that uh, before this, I have already recorded a number of videos on this novel. So four chapters have been covered while I was teaching to my class and right now I'm going to record uh, once more. Uh, next five chapters, I mean from chapter 5 to 10 of the same novel Twilight in Delhi by Ahmed Ali. I must remind my audience that this novel is a type of historical novel where the twilight situation in Delhi about the culture of Muslim Mughals that has been portrayed under the very uh, timing when colonial master was ruling Delhi. And uh, in that regard, some of the characters have become very important in this novel. We have been discussing like the character of Meet Nahal, Asghar and Mehru and after that Bilkis and number of other minor characters have also been talked about. Right now we are in such a situation where Asghar wants to marry uh, one of his cousins Bilkis but uh, the opposition is present from the side of Mir Nihal and in the backdrop of historical situation, post-colonial situation, this is very interesting to discuss how the matters proceeded at a micro level the similar kind of matters were proceeding at the macro level of the post colonial authority, but how it is happening inside the home of a, a, a prince type of person of the Muslim Mughals, Mir Nihal, and how does he take his empire, whatever the empire he's in possession with, and up to what extent he proves himself to be a colonizer, and how the resistance is there from the people who are there to follow him. So let me take my students and audience to chapter 5. How does it begin? What kind of things it does have? Let us see. Uh, let's see, this is here, uh, chapter 5, and uh, everybody can see that chapter 5 begins with the name of Begum Wahid. Begum Wahid is the eldest sister of Asghar, and Asghar has decided that he should talk to his sister about the resistance which is coming from Mir Nihal uh, regarding his marriage to uh, Bilkis, and, and he thinks that Begum Wahid can prove to be very useful and uh, the information writer has provided to us that she was, Begum Wahid was uh, the daughter of Mir Nihal and she was married in, in uh, uh, Bhopal state to Sayyid Wahidul Haq and he died early in age and uh, so therefore uh, now Begum Wahid is a widow of just 19 year and she is having a child as well, second child as well. So in this way, according to Hindu practice, she decided not to marry and to keep the things in the same situation. So one can see here the bitter criticism from the pen of the writer that although Begum Wahid has got an influence on her father, but still she is the widow of very youthful time and that is just 19 years of age and that is the plight of the Muslim uh, women or Muslim, uh, Muslim young women even at that time when she could have married second time but she's not doing so because of the reason that she was living in a society where widow marriage or the second marriage was thought to be very bad omen and so that is why Begum Wahid is a particular representative of all the voices which were hidden which were not given any chances those voices which possibly could have raised but she is spending her life in the same situation the same style so this is what Begum Wahid is going to be and she is now coming to the home of Mir Nihal in order to listen to the story of uh, our our uh, hero Asghar that he he needs to you know get the help of his sister in order to uh, you know get his marriage done with Bilkis and he thinks that Bilkis can prove a very important tool so that is why she is brought she comes there and uh, Ghafoor the servant receives her and Ghafoor is having a very particular personality as this paragraph goes to indicate if we read any line of this paragraph we can see that Ghafoor is a person who is having uh, living in his 30s and is having oiled hair and his uh, you know uh, beard also and all the time he's having kohol in his eyes and is taking hookah and preparing hookah for Mir Nihal as well. So in that way, a fool's personality as a servant has also been indicated in this paragraph. So two characters become very significant here. One is Begum Wahid herself and the other one is Ghafoor. He is also very happy. All the family is really very happy. Mehru is very happy. Mir Nihal's wife, Begum Mir Nihal, is very happy. And Asghar is also very much happy because he thinks that his matter, with the matter of marriage with the Bilkis will be settled. If we continuously shift on this page, we can see that things were going on very well inside Delhi. The businesses were going on very well. 
and in such a situation in one afternoon uh, this is uh, Begum Wahid reaches there but alongside that the writer has taken a little bit of time in order to let us know that there is something going on with regard to Mir Nihal also that he is interested in a uh, you know dancing girl and she's Baban John by the name as the paragraph goes to indicate for example the paragraph reads at night after dinner he usually went out at home he had given out that he went to see his friend Nawab Patan but he went to his mistress that is Baban John a young dancing girl since she had become Minihal's mistress and was in his employ she had given up living in the uh, Chori Bazaar Minihal had rented a house for her in Reba she lived there and entertained him with her conversation and songs and her lit figure and young body. He came home back uh, at 12 or 1 in the night and went to bed. So that is the condition of the Muslim gentry uh, one can talk about at, at the time, at the moment, when this is the culture which is declining and the culture which is, uh, which is going on and on but is under the influence of the British imperialism and colonialism. Uh, my audience and my students can understand the kind of contrast between the behaviors of the people. Mir Nihal on the one hand is opposing the marriage of Bilqis with his son because Bilqis is, doesn't belong to the Sayyid family and so he's taking care of the caste system, caste system which comes actually from the Hindu people. That, uh, that same Mir Nihal is keeping one keep and that is the type of prostitute, that's the type of courtesan and he goes to visit her daily almost and she's living under the payment of that one. On the one hand, this is a bit of criticism on the princes, on the, on the dignitaries of the Mughal culture of that time, but also it goes to show the double personality, the existence of these uh, type of prostitutes, the existence of this type of culture that also goes to indicate that it was not taken so abnormally. So Mir Nihal, though he tried to hide from his family, but he occasionally visited her and paid money for her as well. So in this way, a pure Muslim uh, Mughal culture of the gentry that is being pointed out and the women's condition, for example, that a woman cannot marry a man if she does not belong to a particular caste of Sayyids. And on the other hand, the same woman is present who is not belonging to any of the castes and who is not having any of the dignitary or gentry position. But still she is being paid by a man and man is taking care of her without marrying her. In a way, he's buying the love and she's prostituting her love. So this is the contrast between the reality. This is the situation of the women in Muslim India and that type of culture existed at that time. So let us see what further things we can find about this culture. Uh, this, pa this page uh, definitely talks about, you know, the whole thing. And let's uh, uh, continue to proceed to the next page in order to find something more. And the next page, which is page number 39, maybe having a more discussion about this uh, Babanjan and other dancing girls, but it's not important for us, we should know only. And on the other hand, we have the Zanana in the house of the Mughal gentry, and that Zanana means that women will be living in the four walls of the house and their monotony of the culture will be there. Their monotony is broken at that time only when some visits take place, when some marriages come, when some Mehdi's or Mangni's come at that time, they may be having uh, some important time of their life, otherwise they remain uh, bound within four walls while the men like Asghar or Mir Nihal had a very big chance of visiting the different places including the, visiting the houses of the courtesans as well. And besides this we have one more character which is Begum Jamal's character and that of the Anjam Zamani. So these may be taken as the cousins or these may be taken as the household people. Someone has lost her husband and someone has lost her other people and that is why she's living in the house of extended house of Mir Nihal. Uh, there is a woman also at the lower level and that is going to be Dilchan. Uh, that Dilchan is going to be the maid servant and in this way their discussions, their womanly talk and their uh, womanly talk about Miraj, that Miraj is the expected husband of Mehru that is being talked about by these women. See this is the topic of the women most of the time that they are discussing the marriages, the bridegrooms or the grooms which are coming up and the brides themselves or what, whatever is going to happen. So their main occupancy was, uh, you know, cooking and uh, cleaning and after that having chats about the upcoming marriages, etc. But alongside that, a very small boy has also been talked about and that is Man uh, Mansoor. And that Mas Mansoor is a young boy and parents have died and he's living there. That young boy uh, was most of the time ignored and that young boy was not given any attention 
uh, for example, when he was not paid attention at that time, the paragraph which is uh, visible right now on the screen should be taken care of. I'm reading this paragraph for my audience. Masood would shed a few tears and filled with self-pity would think of his dead parents and of his aunt, Begum Nihal's sister-in-law, who had bought him, who had brought him uh, up in and had left him in Delhi for the sake of education as she lived with her daughter and son-in-law, Mir Nihal's second son, but patience is another name for the hopelessness and he would become quiet and resigned. So that is the young child who is having and facing this situation because of the death of his parents and the father's sake of education is living here. Most of the time he is realized by not only the elders but also the youngers like Mehru that this house did not belong to him and he was a type of sad person. So at home the things like that keep on going at the deeper level. On the upper level everything was all okay and the things were going on like that. So keeping the same pace and moving towards the next pages and trying to find out if there is anything important uh, that we may call on. Uh, this is again the situation uh, talking and discussing the women's living quarters where they spent like that, life like that without uh, having any intervention into the life of the men. That was the kind of life they were living. And same is the case with the uh, you know maid servant who will be discussed possibly uh, some other chapter in detail. But chapter 6 uh, announces the arrival of uh, uh, Begum Wahid as I said in the last chapter that she is supposed to be the arbitrator between the father Mir Nihal and the son Asgar and the marriage of Bilkis may be taking place because of that. So everyone at home were, was very happy, Masood was happy, Shamas was very happy, Shamas is the elder brother of uh, uh, Asgar and even Ghafoor the servant is also very happy at the arrival of this girl. Uh, this widow girl, let us say, because she also uh, she had small eyes, <laughs> looked at Asghar uh, uh, very, very attentively and very lovingly because she was the elder daughter and she was playing the role of a mom. But when she reaches there, another element which is very much important with respect to Kavali that was introduced by the writer that when she comes for the sake of thankfulness and for the sake of uh, removing any evil influence the Kavali was being on. So that indication of the presence of Kavali goes to talk about another type of culture which existed in the name of religion, in the same of Sufism, let us say, the Kavalis were there. And every one of us knows, especially the people in Pakistan, they know what is a Kavali. It's the type of repetitive chanting of certain sentences which are religious in nature. And the, the thing is accompanied with some music as well and people keep on doing so. And especially the Kavalis and the Kavals are invited uh, in order to remove any evil influences which may be present in the homes. And that is why the home of uh, uh, the people of Muslim culture is witnessing this type of presence of the Kavals. So Kavals have come and they are singing Kavali at the very time when Begum Wahid arrives in her home. And uh, the Kavals are chanting certain words and I wish that my readers can see those words. So let me take you to the text first of all. So see here, the Kavali thing is going on. If we move on to the next page, we will be able to find uh, there are certain things which are being discussed by these Kavals in their own language. For example, they are they are uh, using certain words and, and the, every person who is listening to these words, that person is uh, finding out that perhaps it is he the topic of the Kavali. It is he where all everything is going on. Uh, many uh, names are given here in the text which name are quite important. For example, with respect to the Sufism, there is uh, one name in this paragraph like it is Kambal Shah, the Fakir. This is again important with respect to that. And Chirag Ali, Roshan Chirag, uh, Delhi, or the things like that which are very important with respect to the Sufi culture that have been talked about here in these paragraphs and the Kuali is going on. And the indications of the people like in this line, cares and miseries, grief and sorrows, and what is there I have not uh, known in love. These are the things which are being talked about in Kavali. Hakala, Hakka are the very words which are repeated again and again in Kavali. And these Kavalis become the sound of the person who is suffering, become the sound of the heart of a person who is suffering. And in that way, the Kavali is going on when Asghar is also witnessing the Kavali. Some other people are also witnessing the Kavali. They are listening to that. Begum Wahid uh, also listens and has a big sigh of relief as we find here. So everyone is influenced by the thing which is going on, which is called as Kavali. And this, the some of the lines are used repetitively like Ya Muhammad, Muhammad. These are some of the lines which are being repeated in order to bring in some religious influence as well. So Kavalis go on and go on. 
during this Kavali, some other things also happen. Some people are uh, listening and attaching uh, the, the things which happen around in the society, in the streets. These are also being related to Kavali. And the people who suffer because of this and people who become mad and in trance, they go in trance, they are also being talked about with respect to that way. In this way, Kavali is putting some good influences, some bad influences upon the people who are listening to this Kavali. Begum Vahid and Asghar also talk about the situation and they, uh, they think what is going on and what is going to happen. They are realizing some of the uh, things which possibly might not have been realized. Uh, these are the sad things according to them. These sad things are going on and being mentioned by the Kavals also. Uh, well, uh, there is uh, other name mentioned here, Sheikh Fazal Ilahi uh, Karak, Karakhandar. Uh, that's a type of very difficult name. Uh, he is uh, the person, uh, a party of the Kavals were singing and the person among them who is singing. So in that way, Mir, uh, Mir Nihal's house has become the house where this Kavali is present and everybody is listening to that. So in that way, the Kavali goes on. Uh, and, and the things which is now the topic, and that is the topic I repeated again and again, that uh, Asghar's sister, Begum Wahid, has come in order to talk about the kind of marriage of Asghar with, the, with one girl, that is Bilkis, which is not taking place. And here, Bilkis has come and the thing is going on. But alongside that, the writer is taking chances to describe a number of other things as well. For example, here is one paragraph uh, which is uh, like that. Begum Wahid's face fell a little at this and she said, but you can get much better girls. I won't marry any other girl, Asghar said. Preemptorily, I will marry her or no one else. You know that none of my wishes have been fulfilled. I wanted to go to Aligarh to study further, but father put his foot down. He wouldn't hear the name of Aligarh. It's after all a Muslim institution, but he says that it's all the evil doing of the Ferengis who want to make Christians and atheists to all of us. But that is finished now. I have given him to him. But in this matter, I won't listen. In this matter, I won't listen. The matter of Bilkis marrying Bilkis, Saskar says he won't listen to him. And in this way, there could be a big clash between Mir Nihal and his son Asghar. So Begum Wahid is the arbitrator here. Asghar is stressing his point by saying that first he wanted to get a good education by going to Aligarh University. This, this uh, education could be good for him, but the father said that it's taken and uh, given by the Frangis and that means the English people. And so it's Christianizing the people and that's why he would do that. So that was an effort of Mir Nihal in saving his culture, which he has been taking. The culture may be right and wrong, but he was trying to do so. So this is a kind of influence of the colonizer and the resistance from the side of the colonized. That is why this paragraph becomes 100% a representation of the post-colonial theory. And, and again, writer turns to the Kavali by saying that certain lines of quality were going on that was she aimed at a poison sarah straight etc etc poetry romantic poetry is the part and parcel of the life of the people and so these lines will be repeated again and again as well and now if we proceed on to the next page we will be able to find what kawals are saying what bilkis is saying and ultimately if we look at the last sentence which is on the screen the last sentence says uh, that mir nihal would be uh, not would be allowing the marriage of uh, uh, the, the the son with the Bilkis and that's why the, the son says that he would commit suicide ultimately if the marriage does not take place. And so the uh, difficult situation is there and that difficult situation is for Asghar and that for Bilkis. This is a threat given by Asghar that he would commit suicide. And this is the level of uh, love and romance of Asghar that he wants to put and so the things go on and on, go on and Bilkis is trying to convince our father by devising different techniques and but in between the story of Hamid comes there. Let us have a little bit of understanding of the story of Hamid so that we may have a contrasting situation available to us. For example, Hamid was a boy who studied with Asghar in the Makdab. He was a simple boy, well behaved and gentle. He was not only the first to memorize the portion of the Quran which he was asked to remember by heart in one day. But he also washed uh, the Malvi Sahab's dishes, swept the house and ran errands for him. When he was about 18 years of age and there was talk of his marriage, he suddenly went mad. He was a handsome boy and people began to say that some fairy or jinn had fallen in love with him. Others said that it was some evil spirit which had possessed them. 
they called all sorts of Malvis to treat him for the supernatural ailment and took him from uh, one tomb of a saint to another one, but to no avail. So that is another character right now we have. He wanted to marry a girl, she was a pretty girl, and there was something enchanting in her unusual grace. As she sat there in front of the small and dingy room in which she lived, where even the light of the day hardly penetrated, she didn't look a low-caste woman, but a fairy. She wore blue and green, loose white pajamas, and the colors suited her. She was very fond of goats, and as one passed by her room, the smell of the gutters and the damp of the mix with the pungent odor of the uncastrated goats, which dirtied the air for yards around and followed him right to the turn the lane. So that is the story of that girl as well. She was a Chamari girl, you know. Uh, somewhere it is written on the same page that she was a Chamari girl. For example, if you look at this uh, last second, not last line, it says picture of Budhu Durgi Chamari's daughter. So this is Chamari's daughter, which the boy wanted to marry, the friend of Oscar wanted to marry, but that boy became mad after some time. And it was said that he became mad because he was beautiful and he was interested in that Chamari and ultimately uh, nobody is saying that the marriage of Chamari girl, that beautiful girl as the description we have, could not take place with this boy Hamid. Uh, that was the reason of the problem which Hamid suffered. Instead, the people started to say, okay, some genie has become lo lover of this boy and that is why he is so sad. In fact, the story may not be having any importance with the, uh, with the story of Asghar, but uh, at least it goes to provide a type of similarity. As Asghar says that he would become mad if he is not given a chance of uh, marrying Bilkis. Uh, so that is why the writer has presented to us another story where the boy became mad uh, when he was unable to marry a girl, a simple poor girl, but she was beautiful and the marriage couldn't take place because of this absence of marriage. Something has gone wrong with the boy and he was mad. So madness of us girl or, the, or his wish to commit suicide for not allowing him to marry Bilkis could be like this. And that is why a type of contrast is available. So going further into chapter 7 now, let us see what more we can discover. Uh, chapter 7 is not that important that it should be discussed in detail. But I, in the very opening of the chapter, can say, as I have written with red pen, uh, that it can be compared with uh, Jane Austen's novel, Pride and Prejudice. As in that novel, wherever the women would sit, they would talk about the marriage, marriages of their daughters, sisters, or they would talk about the eligible bachelors. Same as the thing going on in this chapter as well. That all the women sit together, they talk about the marriages of the daughters or the sons or the cousins. And sometimes they would talk about the successful marriages and sometimes about the unsuccessful marriages. Uh, Begum Meer Nihal would preside all these functions and discussions, and but other it's people would also hours. follow. For example, here, if you read this paragraph, it will give a type of gist of that. It says, Said Hassan came in. He was a man nearing 40 of medium height. He had a beard and a four cornered cap was on his head. He was Begum Nihal's son-in-law, but his wife had died in childbirth two years ago. He was jovial with an abundant stock of stories and a sense of humor. He came and sat talking of the family and other domestic matters. So that is what all the time these women discuss the family, the domestic matters, the marriages of the girls, of the boys. So that is why this chapter a lot resembles the chapters of uh, Jane Austen's novel, Pride and Press, where a lot of talk has been made with reference to this. So the student need to, uh, they can simply read it, and after that they can have a skipping of this chapter because nothing important has been talked about. Same is the case with chapter 8 because it discusses some of the superstitions and the uh, culture of having water at the homes of the people, well-to-do people with the help of the water carrier. So some of the superstitions are there. I probably could notice that and I have indicated some of the superstitions. For example, when a storm comes, when a heavy loaded storm comes at that time, uh, it is said, for God's sake, put a broom under the leg of a bed, shouted Begum Jamal and Begum Nihal cried, where is Majid? Has anyone seen the boy? A lantern was lighted and the eyes found some rest. I'm here, grandmother, Begum Mahid's eight-year-old son said as he bent down, to put the broom under the leg of Begum Nihal's old wedding bed, but he could not lift it and his chan came to his aid. So that is the kind of superstition, for example, if the air is very fast, the storm has come and people are terrified of the storm and they think of putting the broom under the, uh, you know, post of some, uh, some jar pie or some bed so that it could be stopped. But it didn't stop at all, but still the uh, superstitious nature of the people has been pointed out. Uh, as uh, Edward Said's Orientalism counts that 
East is very much superstitious, so a type of reference of uh, uh, Orientalism is here as the West would think about the people of the East. Though it may not be that right, but still uh, superstition is being discussed here. Uh, I say this, it's not 100% right because in West also a large number of people are there who are 100% superstitious. A type of uh, style has also been talked about in the same chapter. For example, this paragraph says, Hast thou lost thy reason? There go out, and I will break thy legs. And she began to complain, beating her breast with one hand. Those boys fear neither the wind nor the rain. That's the bitterness of the style uh, uh, by a woman which is being spoken that. In that way, the writer is indicating the polyphonic nature of the styles of the woman uh, in, the, in the fiction as a uh, as Bakhtin would suggest that novel is known genre where you can have polyphony type of situations. So whatever type of woman is man is, the type of discussion of the style can be had there, the same as the case here. So this chapter also talks about some of the superstitions and that is why it can be skipped at all together. But there is a system uh, that was present at that time. It is the water carrier system. A big uh, leather bag was carried at the back by waterman. He would fill it uh, from... Uh, the wells and bring it to the houses of the people they where water was disposed of uh, so that is the type of water system nowadays uh, my students may be having the tapped water system but they do not realize the difficulties of water in the past time water was brought by the water carriers and it was given to the houses of the big and large people uh, common people were not having this type of facility so in this way chapter 8 is about the water carrier and some of the superstitions chapter 9 then uh, needs to be talked about at this moment and one paragraph of chapter 9 needs to be read and discussed by us. So let me read this paragraph for my students here. Asghar was her youngest son and uh, since Mehru had been born about 8 years after him, she had lavished a good deal of care on Asghar. The other sons had grown up, found employment and had settled down. Asghar was not so lucky. He had found a job in Bhopal a few years ago but he had called home soon after the, uh, on account of the death of his sister, Begum Saeed Hassan, and uh, things had so happened one after the other that he had not been able to go back to his job. She was therefore more concerned to go back to his job. Uh, she wanted to make up for Asghar's misfortunes, and so Asghar can be called his sister's ladla, brother, because uh, Bahir, Begum Bahir is thinking all the time in so positive terminology. She has been thinking that there could, uh, there was something wrong which was done with Oscar and that is why this type of wrong, uh, no, the refusal of the marriage should not be, uh, should not be done uh, by uh, the family now so that his compensation may be done. Uh, two days after the dust storm, she went, she sent for me in the hall. He came in noble towering and his white beard parted in the middle, his bobbed hair curled at the nape. So this is what the appearance of me in the hall is going to be, that even after having an old age, he was having the graceful hair on his head and that of his beard is very, looked very tall and very attractive and very authoritative at that time. And, and, and that was quite sufficient to impress his wife and this is what the writer is trying to, uh, you know, talk about. So Meer Nihal and Begum Meer Nihal and Begum Vahid are going to get together in order to talk about the marriage of Asr with Bilkis. And this is... Uh, another small paragraph that my students should pay attention in order to have an understanding of the thing which is going on. For example, the paragraph says, I can't hear of this, I have told you, I don't give my consent to the match, I had asked you to stop him from mixing with those loafers and lowboards, but you did not listen, now you want my name and honor to be damned, but the boy threatens to commit suicide. And these are the lines spoken at that time by Meer Nihal when he is suggested by the family that the marriage should take place. He says that his name will be molested, his honor will be molested, and he cannot mix himself with the loafers and the low barred people. So in that way, the classification or the division of the society into classes has been pointed out. The rich people, the poor people, the strong people and the weak people, the colonizer and the colonized. So these type of paragraphs make this novel as the postcolonial novel as well. And then, uh, of course, the chapter 9 will end with this type of discussion and ultimately Meer Nihal will take his hubble bubble and he may not be agreeing to the marriage but ultimately he has to agree because of the threat which comes from the boy, because of uh, Begum Wahid's stress, because of Begum Meer Nihal's stress, he will have to, you know, agree with that and as a result, congratulations and congratulations of the agreement are there. In this way, the chapter end brings us to 
Uh, it's a very small chapter, but this goes to talk about the marriage of Asghar with Bilqis, and everybody is happy. Asghar is happy, Bilqis is happy, everybody is happy, and they and the celebration possibly will go on. So chapter 10 closes with that thing, and we will be able to start next time with chapter 11, where Mushri Bai will be talked in detail. So my students and the audience, let me uh, wind up the whole situation by saying that uh, uh, that Mir Nihal uh, had to give in to the demands of his family only at that time when his daughter came, only at that time when his uh, wife was suppressing. We can say, though the level of status of women was not that high, though they were not given chances to go outside of their home and to enjoy their life on their own, though they had no <coughs> chances of uh, the, uh, you know, selection or the right of choice of marriage, but still they had the type of influence as Mir Nihal was not agreeing to the marriage of Asghar with Bilqis, but he had to agree because of the influence of his daughter, because of the influence of his wife. So this goes to indicate that some type of influence of the married woman was there. And this is the freedom that was present among the women of that time. But I must say that this freedom was not the freedom by right, freedom by choice. It was the freedom dedicated or given by men in his uh, powerful regime that they would say, okay, if you want to have the freedom, you can have, but not without our consultation and power. And that is why this freedom was also a dedicated type of freedom. It was also a benefited type of freedom which was given to the people, uh, by, by these people to their women. But whatever the case may be, the whole five chapters are the discussion of Mir uh, Asghar's marriage with uh, Bilqis, the, the kind of, uh, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, problem which are coming to his marriage and, and so many other things are presented here and ultimately the marriage issue is solved and so everybody is happy now, the agreement is done and in that way the 10 chapters close. So the students are required to go through these chapters and trace the story of Oscar's marriage with Bilqis, the problems, the resistance and ultimately the uh, kind of agreement. So here our lecture of today would be stopping. Uh, thank you very much everybody for taking interest in that. If you have understood anything, if you like this lecture, do not fail to hit the subscribe button. And if you would comment somewhere on YouTube or on Facebook, I would be happy to reply some of the comments as and when I can. So thank you, seeing you in some next coming chapter. Thank you all.